Did you know you can actually use it as a replacement for flour? Whether they are overgrowing in your garden or you're grabbing whatever's on sale at the grocery store, let me show you how you can preserve yellow squash and make something magical with it. Hi folks, I'm Darcy from ThePurposefulPantry.com where we talk about dehydrating food all the time. And today we're talking about yellow squash, but this year we had a pretty small harvest. So I'm relying on the grocery store in order to preserve enough food to put in my pantry for the year. Because some of us, that's what we have to do. So let's get started. Okay, I got a head start on myself. I didn't hit the record button, but here we go. I've already prepped all these ready to do. What we're gonna do is first shred all of this yellow squash. It's perfectly good to do the same things that you do with zucchini. We're gonna do it with yellow squash. You can do it uh, in many ways. You can shred it, you can slice it. I'm doing both ways, so I'm gonna show you how some slices work. So you can actually also shred this just like you do zucchini to throw into things, to make flour, to bake with. You can do all those same things. I already have my shutter attachment here in my Ninja food processor, so we're just gonna start putting these through, turn it on. And that made a quick dice out of all of that. Now see, we have a giant bowl of squash that is shredded. Now there are still some larger pieces in there. There are some seeds. You can go ahead and take this where you split it in half, quarter it, and then take out the seeds. If there are a lot of them and you don't want them, that's totally up to you. I don't care if this is going to powder, it's gonna be fine. So let's get our trays loaded and ready. Okay, so I'm gonna load up my slices just like this. In the next batch I do, I will probably do quite a few more slices uh, just to have them on hand because it turns out I kind of like squash after years of thinking I didn't. So we'll just get these put on the tray, give them their own little space. You don't want to stack these. While they will shrink up, you, because they're broader and a little thicker, you do want to go ahead and just give them a little space. You don't have to be so particular about it, but you want to make sure that you don't have stacked up on top of each other like that. Then I'm going to go ahead, I'm just doubling up my, my mesh here because I don't want to have to store it, but it also helps that when this shrinks up enough, it's not going to fall through. So I'm just going to take this and spread it out. Now I don't have to be as particular about this as I did the slices because this is going to shrink up a ton. So I'm going to pile it on, spread it out, but I'm not going to try to get it like super thin so that you only see a little bit on each tray. I don't want to have too much on here, but I'm trying, I'm not going to be so particular. Okay, and then if you feel like it's a little too thick, take some off, spread it out, and keep going. Your dehydrator will make very quick work of this. And somebody's going to ask me, do I do a salt uh, bath with this to help draw out any of the moisture? No. I never do that and I don't do it because it's releasing nutrients and why would you want to do that? When you let that moisture out, you're letting out the water of the plant which or the fruit which then is taking out nutrients with it and the whole point of preservation is to keep as many nutrients as possible. Does that mean that it might take a little longer to dry? Yeah, but you know what, but I'm keeping way more of the nutrients that way. Vegetables, 125F, 52C. Just turn the temperature on for 124, 125. Doesn't matter, it's cool. Uh, and then when I do it for time, I set it up as high as it goes because I don't care. I don't pay attention to the time. I wait till they're dry. When they're dry, they're done, no matter what the time says. So we'll get it started and see you in about 10 hours. Okay, something that you're gonna see here is that last night when this was finished, I turned it off thinking I'm gonna go ahead and film the end of this. Uh, but when I came in this morning to start finishing the video and showing you how everything turns out, uh, I wanted to show you that some of these did reabsorb enough moisture from last night, overnight, because I totally dropped the ball, walked away, didn't remember that I had done anything, uh, and didn't leave it on overnight when I could get to it. So I have moist zucchini now. And this is even after it's had about an hour to start drying out again, but I thought I would come and record this for you. That if you do that, and if you leave your food out in your dehydrator overnight, um, it's going to reabsorb whatever moisture is in your home. So whatever moisture is in the air, even if you're running air conditioning, you still don't have 0% humidity. It's going to reabsorb and it's going to get soft. Even those of us who have been doing this years, occasionally mess up. Okay, so I've had a little while longer to dry, and here we go. Want to see what they look like. We have the slices, which should break easily. 
just like that. They can be put into anything in order to, like in a meal. So I'm gonna take some of them and put them in some water so that you can see what they look like when they're rehydrated. I'll show you by the end. So here are our shreds. And if you remember when we put them in, it was all the way to the edges of the, the trays. But because it was in one mass and I did it a little bit thicker uh, application on it, it just shrank down in a mass. And it's fine because I'm going to powder. If you want these to be more individualized shreds uh, that you can just crumble and toss into a meal, you'll not want to make it so thick. But because I know I'm going straight to powder, I didn't care. So we have that. It should crunch easily and it's all dry. So this was the tray that I had the fewest on, and there we go, just like that. When you take your trays and you're wondering, I can't get it off, just bend it, and it will all come off just fine. So instead of going straight to a jar, we're gonna go straight to powder. So I'm taking my Nutri Ninja Bullet Blender, and I'm gonna start putting this into the jar. Okay, there is our powder. Now, if you need it super fine, depending on what you're using this for, you can use a more powerful blender. A blender would probably work even better. I haven't pulled my large one out yet, so we may have to do that by the time we're done with this, but what I'm gonna do is add more shreds to this. Now your grind, how fine it is, is based off what you need for how you cook. If you're doing a lot of fine breads that need a fine powder or something like that, you're gonna want a better grind than this. I don't cook that way. I don't make breads that way. Any kind of quick breads or brownies, or even if I'm adding this to some kind of casserole that requires flour for, I don't know, for a thickening or to do some kind of crust on a casserole kind of thing that you might add flour to, I don't need a perfect grind because I don't cook that way. And something else I would do typically is tell you to condition anything that you're gonna do before you actually make the powder because you wanna be sure that what you're putting into your powder is actually really dry instead of only being partially dry. Uh, because what a lot of new dehydrators run into is that they uh, don't realize what things should be like when they're really dry and think that it is and then get themselves caught where they find that they're trying to grind something and it just all sticks together and then that becomes a problem. I also found that bullet blenders will work better if you have them fuller. So if, like, when I first started this, I only had that very small amount, and it's not gonna grind as well as if you have a fuller cup for it to run through because just the way the physics works with these, that you want it fuller. Uh, so if you only have a little bit to do, do it in your coffee grinder. Also, another danger when you're powdering like this, especially depending on your blender, it's gonna always matter between blenders no matter what kind you choose. If you hold it on here forever and you let it run forever, it's creating a ton of heat in here so that you might get some stickiness happening because you're overheating the food that's on the inside. So you have to be really careful, follow the directions of your particular blender and what it says. Okay, so how do we use this? Here is our flour. Now, like I told you before, it's not perfectly ground. You've got a couple little small pieces here that if I got out my Vitamix, it would do a much better job at blending for pure, soft flour. But I don't need that because I don't cook bread that way. But if you cook the bread that way, then you need to use something a little bit better. Anything that does a really fine grind will work, okay? But how do you use this? In order to replace the flour in your meals that you want to cook with, here we go. If your recipe calls for two cups of flour, you will do, and I'm not gonna get picky here, one cup of flour, just like that. Then you will do two thirds cups of flour. Here, then here. And then for your flour, your zucchini flour, whether you're using squash or using zucchini, you can add about a third of a cup to replace that last third. So what you don't wanna do is use more than a third of a cup in a recipe until you've tested it really well. But you can replace up to a th So I wanna clarify something I just said. When I said one third cup out of those two cups of flour, that's not what I meant. I meant to say one third the volume of whatever flour that you're using is what you should be using. So if you have three cups of flour, I'm gonna make it really easy for my math. You never wanna use more than one cup of squash 
flour or zucchini flour to replace it. Those recipes are created with a certain amount of gluten and if you if you take more of that out, your recipe may not come out the way you want it to come out. So that's why I recommend that when you're doing it to start introducing it slowly if you're trying to test one for yourself until you get to the point that you go, okay, that was enough. Or you can look online. There are tons of recipes out there. If you search for like brownie recipes with zucchini flour or squash flour, uh, you can find those. I have a recipe here that I'll show you and I'll have a link to it down below that you can print off. Or you can check out a modern homestead here on YouTube and on her website uh, on the web. So I know those are two that all that do it, but there's, there are tons more out there where there are recipes that have already been tested with the right amount of squash flour to replace the flour. So let's continue. Now to store this, we're simply gonna put this into an airtight container. And what, yeah, that don't have a lot of that left, do I? So you can say that's a whole lot of work for that little bit of powder. But remember there was about double of this when I first started, but I took some of it out to work on that, how to show you how to do the ratio, okay? But the cool thing about this is that you can just keep adding to this jar. As your, as your squash grows, process through your squash. Add that amount into this jar every time you do it. So if you've got all that squash coming in, you can only eat so much yellow squash. You can only make so many yellow squash casseroles. You've got more and more happening keep working at it and then just keep adding it to this. But what I do recommend is, is as you do each kind of powder, that you take it, you lay it on a cookie sheet. I usually line mine with a fruit leather sheet. You can do it with parchment paper. Put it into a warmed oven where you turn the oven on, let it warm up, turn it off. Okay, and if you have a gas stove, you don't actually have to do that. Your pilot light will work the same way. Then you put your powder spread out onto that cookie sheet into the oven and let it dry. You're gonna do this for about five or 10 minutes, maybe 15, if it's really thick, that's up to you. You're gonna pull it out, let it cool off enough, and then put it into your jar to add with what you've done already. Now, how long does this last? This last, generally powders can last between six to nine months when you start thinking about the fact that you've broken these things down into such small pieces that are being exposed to light, moisture, air, and all those kind of things. The more you break things down, the faster that they lose their nutrients and their flavor and their color. However, it's gonna depend on your actual powder. Squash flour can last up to a year. Some things don't, just like with spices. When you open a, 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 a jar of a spice and you smell it and you can identify it, you know it's still good because all those essential oils are still there, the nutrients are still there, everything's happening. But then over time, you start to notice some of your herbs. When you look at them, they've changed. And then when you smell them, it's like, I don't really know what that is. So then what you do is that you break it up in your hand a little bit and smell it again. If you know what it is, it's still okay. You just might have to use a little bit more. But if there's no smell left, it's done. And you need to put it in the compost pile and start over. Well, with flowers, it's kind of the same way, but it's a little harder. So with the squash stuff, know that you probably should rotate through it and use it throughout the winter, all the way into your, the spring when you start producing again and just replace it. So up to a year. Okay, that's generalized. That's a good round window about what you can do. All right, so now, can you do this with zucchini? You betcha, and you can do it even more because zucchini tend to be a lot larger. You can grow them huge uh, and do this the same way. You can separate the green zucchini from the yellow zucchini if you'd like, if you have that option to do a yellow versus a green flower, depending on what you want. I mix it up, I don't care. So if you wanna learn how to do that, watch this video right here. And until I see you again next time, keep preserving.